So, right, just probably just before the pandemic, you went out and had, I think, a, a lunch not far from here, and you were telling me you were kind of gobsmacked. You were learning a lot of this information about fascia at the time. I think it was probably about three or four years ago. Yeah. And and so, although probably some of the principles in your speed school may have been validated by research that you've got, have you? Has there been a sort of a new understanding, a recent understanding about the fascia system that probably five to 10 years ago, most people weren't aware of? And if so, what, what is that? Yeah, absolutely. Not only myself, but more and more people. And I find it you know, really interesting. Well, this is a new frontier. So the fascia system is the largest sensory organ in the body, larger than the skin, has 10 times more the proprioceptors than muscle. This is all proven by hard science, not soft science. So soft science is, you know, you listen, open up the paper or you're, you know, hear it, read an article and they say, oh, caffeine's no good for you. Two years later, caffeine is good for you. You know, eggs are no good, yellow and the eggs are no, oh, no actually they're good for you. That's soft science, you know, you back and forth, back and forth. And then there's hard science that, you know, hey, this is conclusive. So this is some, this is some hard science, you know, understanding the amount of proprioceptions in fascia, understanding it's the largest sensory organ in the body now, uh, understanding that it's trainable, that's 10% of it is, is cellular. 90% um, of it is uh, just pure collagen. Uh, it's the extracellular matrix. It's outside the cells. Without fascia, your body is, you know, your muscles are chopped meat. Without fascia, your muscles are pulled pork. Um, you know, it's what holds cells together. We know that, you know, to get more detailed, going back to your physiology books, you know, we absolutely, it's conclusive. We know we have the uh, 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 endomyosin around a muscle cell, right? We have the perimyosin wrapped around groups of muscle cells, and we have the epimyosin around the entire muscle. That's, those are fascia layers. And that, that fascia is, is collagen and water uh, with ground substance that, that makes this, you know, our body dynamic and springy. And without it, you know, we don't have spring, we don't have anything, we're just chopped meat. You know, it's this fascia that the muscles stretch and pull apart. And when I say fascia, I also mean tendons and ligaments, right? It's all the same collagen. Research shows about 80% of all tendons and ligaments in fascia are the same type of collagen. It's a protein molecules that make collagen non-living, non-calorie dependent. And uh, this is the stuff that, that holds our organs together. It wraps, our cell, it wraps cells, it wraps veins, arteries, um, you know, uh, nerves, and, and it's in between every muscle cell. It wraps groups of cells, it wraps entire muscles, it wraps individual muscles, groups of muscles, it's everywhere. So we didn't really understand it for the last 500 years because most anatomists would just disregard it, you know, do dissection and teach anatomy, and not, that's not the fun stuff. This is this packing material. <laughs> it's kind of like the stuff you get with the, open the Amazon box. It's like, it means nothing. It just holds stuff in place. That's what they thought, right? But no, it has a lot of nerve endings and it doesn't just hold stuff in place. It, it, it's a big pain conducer and uh, you know, it's, it's, it has a lot going on in it. And um, now we know it's, it's responsible for a lot of uh, athletic performance. So my colleague, Robert Schleip, who's a top German scientist, did an ultrasound on the right pec of Thomas Roller. Thomas Roller won the gold medal in the Javelin in 2016. He's a 290 foot thrower or a 95 meter thrower, 94 meters in the jab. He's big time, right? So he identified a three millimeter aponeurosis. That's a, that's a <laughs> three millimeter thick layer of connective tissue, tendon tissue, you know, fascia. Three millimeters on this side, a half a millimeter on this side. So he has this big elastic band <laughs> that came through his body. Why? Because over time, through mechanical transduction or David's law, putting a certain stress on the body, the body's gonna respond. And the body responded with these little spiders called fibroblast cells that literally are little slugs or spiders that crawl everywhere in your body. This is hard science, non-negotiable, that crawl everywhere in your body. You have millions, billions of them crawling everywhere, casting webs of collagen based on the types of stress you put on your body or the lack of stress you put on your body. Now, what do I mean by the lack of stress? If I sit at my desk all day and I operate like this, and after a while, I get stiff here. Now, if I do this for 20 years, I'm locked down here, and my posture is like this. Well, that's not just neural, you know, uh, hypertonic muscle. That's layers of collagen that have just been woven, and you're just physically stuck, and you're not going to get better unless you get somebody that really knows their stuff to break up that collagen.
And that's because these spiders are, are, are casting webs. So if I sit like this all day at my desk, you know, with my legs crossed or like this, well, my, my right leg's externally rotated. When I run, I'm gonna tend to get this. And it could be very so slightly, you can't even notice in the naked eye. Put it on the video cameras, now all of a sudden, now you have a knee problem. You don't know why. It's because you've been sitting a certain way all day. So I, posture hygiene I talk a lot about. Just your, 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 your movement hygiene, you know, your sitting hygiene, everything, not just your spine, because we know, we know 80% of people on the planet have back problems. That's because, you know, we, 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 we say, sit and bend a certain way and we actually do the opposite. We, we, we delaminate the collagen in our vertebral discs. You know, it's called the annulus fibrosis, the collagen that wrapped the vertebral discs inside is the nucleus propulsus, and that collagen that wraps it is called the uh, annulus fibrosis. And it's almost like the opposite, because we're sitting, we're rounding, and we're delaminating, opposed to strengthening. And how we strengthen, we keep good back hygiene, we load with carries, we do certain things to, to build that connective tissue to have a strong lumbar. Uh, so the science is pretty interesting in terms of connective tissues. Keith Barr has done a lot of research out of UC Davis. He did uh, ultrasound and MRIs of uh, uh, women soccer players, looked at uh, ligaments of the knee preseason. Certain, you know, there were a certain thickness, and then after the season, they actually became thicker and stronger, wow. you know, through stress. Um, so it, it's interesting. So connective tissue, tendons, ligaments, fascia is trainable. And if we train it the wrong way or we don't move enough or we sit a certain way, we are, we are creating this, this collagen matrix in our body to work against us. It's a, it's a big time pain uh, uh, transmitter and um, there's a lot of things going on in it in terms of um, we need to know in your training style, what you guys do at Escape really is important because it's multi-directional. So my good friend, Michelle Delcourt, which you know, um, you know, he was a strength coach for hockey athletes 20 years ago. He was getting his guys stronger traditionally through sagittal plane movements, squint, bo squat, bench, deadlifts, getting them really strong, goes to the hockey coach, how are my guys doing? Got to get them stronger around the puck, all right? Goes back, gets them stronger, benching more, squatting more, deadlifting more, how are my guys doing? Got to get them stronger around the puck. Who's beating my guys? The farm kids. Boom, the Viper was formed, right? Like farm boy strength. If I had two wrestlers up here, same exact weight, same age, same training aptitude. You know, they had the same skill, but one kid grew up on the farm and one crew kid grew up in the city lifting weights. Who are you going to bet on? Probably the farm kid because there's just something different about their strength. He's just had a stronger grip. It's like that uncle who's a construction worker or that person you know who's a mason. You know, like what, what makes them stronger? It's their connective tissues. You know, it's, it's, it, they have much stronger, more dynamic more connective tissue working for them, more dynamic connective tissue. One last thing I'll say about connective mm -hmm. tissue, they did research with kangaroos. They put kangaroos on treadmills, believe it or not, they measured force production, they measured speed, they also put them in lanes with fences on force plates, and they put uh, energy consumption masks on them, you know, VO2 max uh, mask and uh, measuring energy consumption. And they had kangaroos hop at three meters per second, and they had them hop at six meters per second. So that's about, six and a half miles an hour and 13 miles an hour, roughly. And the kangaroos burn the same amount of energy hopping twice as fast. So if you went out on a run today and, and you were to say, I'm gonna run a mile and I'm gonna run at six miles an hour, that's a 10 minute mile. But now I'm gonna go run 13 miles an hour. Now I'm gonna go run a mile in uh, five minutes compared to 10 minutes. Probably gonna burn a lot more energy, right? Kangaroos burn the same amount of energy. And it's not because they have more white fast twitch muscle fiber. We thought that was the case. It's not the case. It's because they use their Achilles tendon and their free energy from their, their connective tissue system to propel them faster without using more muscle. They use the muscle more in an isometric fashion when they hop faster, not in a contraction fashion. So that's proven. They also measured 10,000 meter runners and they looked at world class guys and those guys right below them, right just a smidge below sub world class. And they looked at about halfway through the race, the uh, sub world class runners, their hips would begin to uh, undulate more at 5,000 meters. So if you're running and you're strong, you're not, you're not going up and down too much. You're kind of level because when your foot hits the ground, you're bracing, you're strong, you're using that free energy. We're the only bipeds that have 
uh, this, this, this connective tissue energy or free energy. And the world-class uh, you know, 10,000 meter runners, their hips weren't undulating as much, so they're not using as much muscle compared to the people that fatigued halfway through the race where their hips started to sink down, so now they gotta get more concentric contraction more than they normally would if they had that bracing ability and had more of that free energy contribute to each run. So I, I'll use this as an example. If I have this, uh, this weight, right, this five pound weight, and I'm here doing this, I'm gonna fatigue you know, after a while. You know, I'll do this for a few minutes, but then I use free energy, right? See? That's free energy. That elastic provides free. We have this in our body. Connective tissue fascia is made. It works just like this. Now, the connective tissue around like our Achilles tendons is more like this, collagen. Um, the connective tissue around your stomach, which expands and contracts, is more elastin. You know, it's a different type of collagen uh, fiber or collagen protein. Um, because, and women, when you have birth, guess what? You, you're hoping for a lot of elastin in your hips, in those, in those, uh, in those joints that have to expand and contract, because that's all, that's all connective tissue um, that, that you know, holds us together, that expands and contracts. Mm -hmm.